hi and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the very last video of 2023 um, as soon as this video is over um, i will be packing my bags and going back to texas uh, for the winter holidays um, i know that this past uh, few months uh, at the end i've been a little bit sparse with the video posting apologize i haven't been able to film i haven't been available on the weekends which is the only time i can film um so yeah i haven't been available for the weekends to be actually be able to sit down and sit in front of a uh, in front of the camera so it's actually it might only have been what maybe two weeks since you've seen a previous video or um actually no i posted another one before this but before that there, there basically there were gaps um so it might be a while for you but it's been even longer for me i don't think i've sat in front of a camera for about a month and now i have a cough <laughs> And um, I don't know if I'll be able to uh, subdue it long enough for the entire video, but we'll see what happens. Um, in any case, let's go through this quickly. What is this exactly? This is my uh, October and November wrap up. So again, I wasn't able to st uh, sit in front of the camera for a long time. So I was never actually available to uh, film my October wrap up. And November, I had to... Um, I started reading for the nonfiction November um, sort of readathon month, and I was doing quite well with that. But then I had to stop reading um, almost maybe like a week with, into November just because I just didn't have time. I had to take care of some other things. Um, I uh, Reading was just, it was not a priority. It was just something I just had to say, you know what? November we can't read it's just not it's just not something I can do so I decided to put them together um, October actually had quite a good reading month which is kind of a shame that I couldn't talk about these earlier um, but I read one two three four five six seven books in October which is um, quite unlike me um, but I can't say that anything was super memorable to be honest some of the books I enjoyed more than others, but overall, not really the best um, month in terms of quality, even though I did have quantity. Um, let's start with the first book that I finished in November, because it was a carryover from the previous month, um, and that is Inheritance from Mother by Minae Mizumura. Um, This is a book that I was super, super looking forward to because of um, the book Twilight Years. This book is um, about a woman who is having to deal with the emotions from the death of her mother, but even more so, it has to deal with, emotion, with her emotions leading up to the death of her mother, where she has sort of turned into the primary care caregiver of her mother, a woman who was or had been an incredibly difficult person, uh, both in sickness, but even in health. Um, so it's really about this uh, woman who um, she's in her mid fifties and she has to just deal with this being a caregiver for her elderly mother while also having to deal with the fact that she knows that her husband is having an affair and just sort of t coming into terms with what is my life now and what is my place in it? Like, what am I here to do and what should I do? So it's, um, it's a book that as a whole, I did find the story quite um, interesting. I thought the characters were very well done. I thought it really delved into all the emotions that comes from um, having guilt and shame, but still having love for for your your, your family. Um, just all of that, all those difficult emotions, I think it really expressed them quite well. My gripe though with this book is that it was too long. It went on for too, too it just went too far, too long. Um, I think, I think it, a lot of it could have been cut out. It's a 450 pages. I think this book would have done very well at 300 pages, to be honest. I think there's, there's quite a little bit of repetition and I, it, this definitely has to do with the fact with the way this was published, where it was published traditionally in a newspaper, where one part comes out a little bit at a time. And usually when that happens, uh, things tend to repeat just in general. Um, so I think when this book was sort of bound up into novel form, maybe they could have edited it at that point. So I think this is a beautiful book. I think it was very, very well written. I think the emotions expressed were, it showed how difficult a situation this is. I just think this could have been edited, 
edit it down because after a while to be perfectly honest I got quite bored with this book it took me I did struggle to finish this a little bit because I just kind of wanted it to end so that was the first book that I read this month uh, or the month of October then I finished um, Life for Sale by Yukio Mishima this is a cover that I absolutely absolutely adore um, I just think it it just it just makes you want to like pick up this book and see what is in what what is uh, going through the pages, and this this is this one's this one is a good one. Um, at least I think it was very good, and I'm going to explain why. So Mishima is a is an author that I um, surprisingly enough have not actually read that much from. I've read I think one book of short stories. I would say I've read one full length novel, and then I gave up on his uh, semi. I don't know if it's actually a semi-autograph autobiography or if it's yeah actually considered an autobiography I, mean, I don't remember because it's been a while but the I think it's called Of Sun and Steel I believe it was and that one I had to give up um in the middle because I just Mishima is a, quite a character in himself and I just don't think I was getting him very well um I think it's something I would have to revisit and I think Mishima as a whole um, is an author that I will appreciate more when I've read more of his body of work so that I can compare his works to each other. I think there are some authors where um, they have that there are some authors where like every individual work you can really appreciate immediately and understand them immediately and really um, uh, really uh, um, not feel but really like create a connection with quite easily um, and then I think there are some authors where it takes comparing their works to one another to get a better feel for like themes and like uh, what they're just seeing what they're trying to say um, what their um, what their ideals are and whatnot and I think Mishima is one of those authors for me where I think I just need to read more of his body of work and then compare it as a whole which is actually something I did um, with Kobo Abe who ended up being one of my favorite authors. So this book, um, as I've sort of looked into, is kind of very much outside of his realm. Um, it's a book about this young man, Hanyo, I think he's in his early 20s, and he just kind of decides, you know what, I'm just gonna give my life for sale. And what he means by this is that you can hire him for any job, doesn't matter what the risk is, whether it's death, illness, severe, um injury whatnot you can hire him and he will do what you say and because of that obviously he gets involved with a quite sinister underworld where he keeps getting employed and yet somehow surviving these really random uh seemingly random tasks um and really dangerous uh situations um but he, somehow he just keeps p kind of pushing through with them and then the story gets uh, crazy crazier as you get on so for one, he has to like deal with this mobster's, um, he has to, he's been asked to sleep with this mobster's wife. Um, another one, this woman um, hires him so she can suck his blood. Um, and then just things just snowball from there. Now I think, so this is a book that for me personally, I really enjoyed the story. I liked the momentum of it. I liked the absurdity of it. And I like the absurdity of it, particularly because it does actually remind me of Kobo Abe. Um, Kobo Abe is an author who kind of starts with an absurd idea at the beginning, but it's still grounded in reality. But then as his books progress, you go, you, you take a very like huge turn of like paranoia and frenzy and um, sense of urgency and panic and it just snowballs into these ridiculous situations and I think Mishima kind of did that he did something very very similar however the only thing is that this book compared to Kobo Abe's work there isn't really a strong um, theme so while Kobo Abe is very much someone who talks about like uh, the individual versus society individual versus man as the idea of man as a whole individual versus himself um, and then just like goes into uh, ideas of identity, etc. Um, Mishima doesn't really have anything to really grasp on. It's just a fun story. It's a good story. It really propels you forward. But the at the end, like with the character, you're just kind of like, well, that happened. <laughs> Don't really understand what 
happened to me and what happened to the character, but that happened. Okay, <laughs> let's see where life takes us <coughs> after that. And so um, you're not really going to get a very satisfying ending. You're not going to get a very satisfying message. But I still really enjoyed this. Um, but I know if you're a diehard of Mishima's more traditional works, you probably won't like this. Or it's very, I think it's more likely that you won't really like it. Now, I'm going to quickly go over two books that I read that I've actually already sort of discussed. Um, I read My Year of Rest and Relax Relax. <laughs> Relaxation by Altessa um, Moshfeg. Um, this is a book that has been a booktube, uh, literary world, sort of like darling for a long time. Um, and so it's a book that even though I don't generally tend to go into popular fiction that much, it did intrigue me to want to um, pick it up and see what it's about. Um, it's about this young woman in New York City um, in the year 2000. 2000 <laughs> i should know that date because um, it's very obvious um in the year 2000 who has just kind of decided that she's going to leave society and just sort of just for a year just be incredibly selfish take drugs sleep her days away and just sort of not exist basically um this is a book that I, I was quite excited about because of that theme. I like the idea of, again, this whole concept of individual versus society, wondering about our place in society, what it is, um, the idea of capitalism, the idea of being um, sort of sheep to the uh, job market and things like that. And I, I, I really liked the idea of following the mindset of someone who decides to just say, you know what, no, I'm not going to participate in that. And not only am I not going to participate in that, I'm going to cut off all connection to everything and just drug my way through the year. Now, uh, there's a lot of uh, criticism in terms of privilege that she can only do this because she's a young white woman and um, because she has an inheritance. And it's like, well, yeah, but that's, that's talked about in the book. And it makes sense. And I don't personally always having to use the concept of privilege as an excuse to not read something or watch something and just it, I think it's gone a little bit overboard to be to be um perfectly honest especially when it's it makes sense because these people do exist and their stories do still need to be told privilege or not now the issue I had with this was the writing yes it's well written yes it's well presented yes um the story is told like it's supposed to be told but did I care about it at all? No. For me, this is a book that anyone can write. There's no flavor. There's no individuality to it. It doesn't really say anything. Um, and at the end of the day, for me, it's just not memorable. Now, um, I did a video about, a whole video about this book um, because I wanted to discuss about this concept of the kind of writing that's in this book. So definitely watch that video if you're interested because you'll get like a long um, a longer see at how I really, really felt about this book. But in the case, this kind of failed for me. Now, uh, a book I read at the same time of this or at the same uh, the same sort of moment of time that I don't have because I read it online is I read Jacob's Room by Virginia Woolf. Um, this was my first foray into Virginia Woolf um, and I wanted to start with a short work with by her to get a, to get a feel for her. But short does not mean easy and short does not mean it's not going to take a while to read. It took a while to read. Um, but there's a reason for that. Now, in um, Jacob's Room is a, is a very interesting book. Um, it's because of the way it's structured. So it, it takes place around this, this young man named Jacob and it follows him from his youth to when he's like maybe young 30, uh, young 30s or late 20s. And it just follows his youth um, as a young man in, in proper uh, society. And the thing that's interesting about it is that it's a book that is about Jacob, but never actually is told from Jacob's point of view. It's, 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 he's, he's, he's the anchor to the book, but the book isn't really about him, to be honest. And the way I, the best way I can explain it is where it's kind of like if you were to watch a, a, a movie where you can see Jacob walking in a straight line. So just imagine him walking in a straight line down this corridor that is lit up and all around him is dark. 
and imagine that as he's walking, so as he's walking from his youth to his young, um, to young adulthood, you see him walking and you can imagine the camera turning around him, always, always spinning around him as it goes down the corridor, spinning, spinning, going, walking along with him. And as it spins, as the camera spins, yes, it revolves around him, but as the camera spins, it's picking up conversations around him. So, um, it's, it goes from one character to another character and they're just they're just going through their daily lives as it revolves around this main principal character of Jacob. And so the conversations are never complete. They're very often just single sentences. They don't really, um, sometimes it can be as daft as, as, as have you brought out the tea or it could have, um, or it could be like a few disjuncted um, sentences that do give you a glimpse as to actually what's going around in the world around um, around Jacob but nothing is complete conversations are never complete um, a character can come in as soon as as quickly as they leave because again the camera is spinning you're just you're just catching glimpses you're just catching whatever's coming around you take it in and Virginia Woolf writes that and it creates this narrative about this young man Jacob and it basically but more um, more generally, it creates a narrative about the young youth at the time as we were leading into war. Um, and it's really, really an, a remarkable achievement of writing. Now, the book, did I, can I say that I really enjoyed it and that I loved it? No, I can't. But it was a beautiful reading experience. It was an incredibly interesting experience. And Virginia's Wolf's, Virginia Woolf's writing is exquisite. Um, I explained it again in that video because the whole thing was I compared specifically Jacob in Jacob's room with Altessa Meschweg's uh, My Year of Rest and Relaxation to compare how both books were books that in the end I didn't quite enjoy I don't really like um they're not they're not something I you can really like firmly get a hold on and be like yes that's that plot is amazing it's not something like that they're not books of entertainment but for me, um, the reason I create that video is to show that you can have books that were with unlikable characters or characters you don't really care about. You can have books about really dark subjects or you can have books where it's not about entertainment, but one was not well written or one is written in, in a style that I don't really quite like and the other one is just absolutely beautiful. So definitely look at that video where I compare them um, quite deeply because I, I it would be a mess of me to, to, to um, repeat exactly what I said in that video in this one. But yeah, just to say two books um, that I didn't really care for as in terms of an entertainment or a plot kind of sense, but that I at the same time, I got very different things out of them, where one of them was quite an amazing experience, the Virginia Woolf, and the other one, the Moshfeg, is something where I'm like, okay, I read it, now I know what everyone's read. All right, the next book that I read in October, um, again, I read online because I had initially um, intended, intended to read just one short story, and that short story is the short story of Carmilla uh, by Sheridan Lufanu. Um, I wanted to read Carmilla because it was a predecessor to Dracula, um, Dracula being a book that I read back in September, I believe, and absolutely, absolutely adored Dracula. Like, I fell in love with Dracula. I was hooked from the very first page to the last page. Um, really just absolutely loved it. And so I kind of wanted to see its predecessor of Carmilla. And then it turned out that Carmilla is actually part of a bind-up with... Um, four other short stories. So I ended up reading the entire collection of short stories, which is called In a Glass Darkly. So In a Glass Darkly by Sheridan Le Fanu. And the reason these uh, stories are collected together is because they're tied by sort of like this doctor who basically, um, our narrator is talking about these documents that he received from a doctor and he's sharing those doctors with an outside person. And then basically the documents from this doctor are of the doctor having interviewed other people who have talked to others who have had this experience with these supernatural things um, in our world. So basically ghosts and vampires. Now the five stories, um, there's one called Green Tea, another is The Familiar, another called Mr. Justice Har Harbottle, uh, next one is The Room in the Dragon Volant, and then Carmilla. Now, my favorite stories were Carmilla, The Room in the Dragon Volant, and I believe 
Green tea was okay. I didn't like the familiar and I really disliked Miss, um, Mr. Justice Harbottle. Um, but as a whole, uh, it was really just wonderful book. Just <laughs> really great. Um, I mean, just really exciting and uh, dark and supernatural and mysterious and um, really just takes you into uh, this fantasy world of ghosts and the supernatural and Dracula, which is something I don't really read too often. Um, it's something I, I've, it's, it's definitely a genre of media I enjoy in like film and whatnot. I definitely enjoy reading the dark, creepy uh, ghost stories and horror movies and things like that. Um, but it was quite fun to read it in the in books and even the um, in short story form. And even though the stories, yes, they're very, very predictable, but that makes sense because they're kind of the genesis of all these types of stories. So it makes sense that over time we are so familiar with these tropes that for us it's cliche, but you, to, for something to be cliche, you have to create the cliche to begin with. And that's what um, that work is. And it was really, really a, quite a delight to read even if I only liked like half of the stories, but really, really delightful. So now, um, two more books uh, that I read. I read um, the play Don Juan, uh, Don Juan by Moliere, the famous French Moliere. This is my first time reading Moliere, and so I decided to read the most famous work, uh, Don Juan, which is a story we all well known about um, a young man who is quite the seducer. He has a wife, but he doesn't want to be with her um, he something like he just married her because she said, Hey, I want to get married. It's like, yeah, sure. Okay. Whatever. But with every intent of continuing to be the womanizer that he is. Um, now the story is just, it's just a fun, um, it's just a really fun play. Nothing too like, um, grandiose about it. It's not particularly like, um, it's written in prose. It's not written in rhyme. Um, it doesn't have really that much of like a play of words. It doesn't or anything like that. But it is grounded by this one character god called uh Cianarel, who is the um in modern days we would say an assistant but um he's the attendant of sir don juan um and he, uh, Cianarel is very like very wimpy character he's very much against his what his master's master likes to do to a woman he's very against it he thinks it's improper he thinks it's vile he thinks uh, don juan should settle uh settle as he intended with his wife and stay with his wife um, but at the same time he is too cowardly and too timid uh to really confront the man and so every time he's about to confront him he sort of like holds back and goes no no never mind i didn't say anything and he is just really, he, he creates the humor in this play and he makes it really, really wonderful little experience. So not the most, um, in terms of like creativity, not the most creative play, not the most, um, uh, not the most extravagant use of the French language, but very, very fun nonetheless. And it's great to see the creation. Oh, uh, it's not the creation of this character. Um, Moria did not create the character of Don Juan. It, he, the character already existed. But to sort of see the play rendition of this very famous character. So that was really, really fun. Then I read um, the very famous... I need to get out of the sun. <laughs> uh, the very famous um, Norwegian author Tarhe Vesas. Um, I read his book, The Birds. Now, um, I have read him before. I read his book, Ice Palace, which I think is one of the most beautiful, heartbreaking um, books, one of the books that I've ever read. The Ice Palace is just devastatingly beautiful. Um, but somehow, The Birds is actually more, more, um, more famous. And this was quite good, but I didn't, I have to say, I do prefer the Ice Palace. Uh, the Birds is about this young um, man named Matisse, who is somewhere on the spectrum scale, um, I don't know, autistic, or maybe has a little bit of downs. I don't know what he is, it's not specified, but he is somewhere on the spectrum where he is a little bit more simple-minded. Um, and he lives in a cabin with his sister, and one day, these uh, birds go over the roof of their home and he becomes obsessed. He thinks the, the, the birds are here to tell him something, um, are here to lead him to a new life. And he gets quite obsessed with them and he tries to express himself to his sister and to the neighbors and to the farmers. Um, 
but he just being simple-minded, he just can't do that. Um, and so the book just revolves around this young man, Matisse, um, as his sister takes care of him as best as she can, but obviously it's just the two of them. And he, with him not being able to work and make money, it's a very big struggle. So it's just this beautiful little book following these characters. At one point, a man enters this their world and his sister becomes uh, quite infatuated with the man and it sort of turns everything around and Matisse uh, doesn't know where what his role is and he doesn't understand why no one seems to care about the birds and it's just it's really really a heartfelt heartbreaking emotional story about just this one these characters at this moment of time in this one area in Norway and it was really 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 beautiful I really thought this was lovely still prefer the ice palace just because the ice palace just really just moved me like no no other but this really was a beautiful beautiful book now those are all the books that I read in October seriously I really thought I was going to carry that you know that um that movement and bring it into November unfortunately I had to stop um so I read, um, I ended up reading only three things and barely that. In my last video, I introduced you, um, the, I introduced you to the Japanese literary magazine, Monkey. Um, I talked about this all in that. Um, and this I was able to read during my lunch break at work, just read a few short stories at an end, at a, um, at a time. Um, if you didn't watch that video, basically this is a literary magazine with a bunch of Japanese authors translated into English. Um, and I think it's a really, really great um, way to dabble into Japanese fiction. Uh, now, admittedly, I don't didn't really like really too many of the stories in here. Um, I think there was only like two that I really liked, uh, that I quite liked. One is called Hell by Kiku, Kikuko Tsumura. And then the last story was the one by my, one of my favorite authors um, at this time, and that's uh, Yugo Tsushima and it's a story of flying squirrels. Um, but other than that, the, none of the stories are really to my taste, but that's really quite subjective. And I think this is a really, really amazing bind up. And I really think that if you're interested in this kind of thing, you definitely should uh, look into buying this. So definitely watch my video on that from last week um, if you're curious about that. Um, then I decided because we are entering uh, the winter, I decided I would finally, finally dip my hands back into Yasunari Kawabata with his book Birnish, his most famous novel called Snow Country. Um, Kawabata is an author that when I've read um, a few works by, and at his the last work I read by him, Dandelions, I said, you know what, I really want to give up on Kawabata. I don't like him. I don't, um, I don't get involved with his writing. He's too boring. I never want to finish his books. I really do want to quit. But Dandelions was a book that was published posthumously. So I thought, you know, maybe it's not fair to say that. And maybe I have to at least give his most famous work um, a chance before I say, you know what, I'm going to give up on Kawabata. And you know what, I'm giving up on Kawabata. I'm just, I'm not, at least 10 more years, I'm not going to read another Kawabata because I just can't with his books. Um, this book... <laughs> is about a young man um, who at um, three different moments of times he goes into the north of Japan uh, where it snows quite heavily and he goes there to meet this woman at a uh, onsen at a bath house um, and it just follows their relationship. Um, now I was excited about this book from the very first scene because it has this beautiful train scene um, as the train goes through um, the tunnels and goes through the night, um, a young man sees this reflection of this young woman and he just observes her through the reflection, um, her reflection bouncing off his window. And then at one point he observes her as she sticks her head out the window at a certain station where they stopped and she talks to a station master about her brother who was working in the area. And that scene was absolutely beautiful. I thought it was Kawabata's best re best writing that I've read so far. I was hooked. But then as soon as he got to the onsen with the geisha and their relationship, I was bored. I was absolutely bored. I did not care about anything. 
um, the writing couldn't push me through um, the book and I decided after 50 pages that I'm giving up on this and I'm giving up on Kawabata. So it's official, Kawabata, you will not, not see on my channel unless I'm still doing booktube in 10 years and in 10 years I decide to reread them. <laughs> so no Kawabata for me, we're done. Uh, final because finally to read a little something cheerful and to have one book at least read in um, in November that I knew that I would enjoy since I didn't have good luck with the short stories and I didn't I definitely didn't have luck with Kawabata. I did decided to read the most recent volume, volume four of Kujima Utaeba Ye Hororo, um, which is just this beautiful little manga about this boy and a bird that has is hibernating in Japan. Um, until the spring where he it will go back to Russia to his um, master to his owner and to well basically Maxime his darling Maxime his darling owner Maxime who raised him from birth it's just this beautiful funny little charming um, really sweet fun um, character design it's very simple there's barely any dialogue it's 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 the type of thing you read in like slowly 20 minutes enjoying enjoying the the the, the 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 drawings as you go along but it's so sweet-hearted and lovely and fun and cheerful um this one in particular takes place over the winter holidays um and it's just a loving family story with a, just a wonderful and just super super fun like character where you're just like you're 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 very cute but you're also kind of disturbing and yeah just follow this is like beautiful fa um family story where you're actually quite worried about an older brother and I'm really wondering if this story is going to go in a happy way or in a sad way but in any case any case yeah it was just a, a nice way to um end my November reading and go into December where December right now I am not reading anything um I will see we'll see if I end up reading in Texas in any case I won't be posting videos in Texas so like I said this is my last video for 2023. I want to thank you guys so much for watching my videos um, and for commenting and participating and really just interacting with me. It's been a really, really real pleasure and I have quite a few ideas for 2024 um, that I think can be quite fun. So have a wonderful winter holidays and I will see you guys in January. Bye!